Welcome to the Scrum Guide based training. We have four lessons. So we are starting with lesson one of four. A brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Abrachan Pudusheri. Uh, my colleagues call me AB. I'm highly experienced agile practitioner and coach uh, with uh, totally more than 30 plus years of uh, work experience. And out of that 15 plus years, I've spent uh, implementing agile, helping teams to transition from waterfalls to agile using Scrum. I work very closely with uh, startups, medium-sized organizations, and very large organizations as well uh, in transitioning their teams from waterfall to agile. I'm the founder director of BMRI.in, that is Project Management Research Institute. And I am a contributor at uh, scrumlands.org, uh, which is an agile PMO, that is resources for agile teams to succeed uh, in their agile way of working. Now, uh, while doing this course, uh, please note down all the key points highlighted as key points along with the key point number. So if you're intending to get a certificate at the end of the course, at the end of the course, there will be a small quiz or assessment where you are required to answer uh, questions uh, regarding these uh, key points along with the, the key point number. So while listening to me, please watch this video as a, as a student, take notes, especially whenever a key point comes in, please note down the key point number and the why and what is that key point uh, so that you can pass the exam very easily. But if you don't need uh, to pass the exam, still it will help if you can make some notes so that the knowledge gaining can be really assured. Uh, Project management frameworks, basically we have two categories of project management that is predictive and the adaptive and agile. Now a new form has come in that is the hybrid project management where within a project itself, we do both the adaptive and uh, predictive. When we say predictive, uh, predominantly it is waterfall uh, and it is very generic in nature. When we say waterfall, maybe for example, I must complete the requirements gathering exercise first. The collector requirements must be approved. Then I must get into the scope definition. The scope must be approved. Then we get into detailed design and the design must be approved. Then only we get into uh, construction work followed by testing and commissioning and all those things. So that is waterfall. Waterfall can be applied for IT projects. Many projects are still using waterfall uh, and most of the construction projects, uh, like EPC engineering, procurement and construction that still follows uh, waterfall or waterfall is the best for those kind of projects, which, I, which we'll explain uh, in detail as we proceed. And then we have the adaptive and agile styles. Uh, under adaptive or agile, we have Scrum, test-driven development, feature-driven development, extreme programming, scaled agile, DSDM, and the list is pretty huge. So out of this, uh, the most popular one is the Scrum, mainly because Scrum can be applied across multiple domains. So Scrum is considered a, is, is one of the, the most popular one among these things, whereas TDD, FDD, XP, Scaled Agile, DSDM, all these things can be applied only for technology-driven or IT projects 
uh, whereas Scrum can be applied across multiple domains. Personally, I worked, uh, I've helped teams, uh, I've helped work with marketing teams, I work with uh, law, law firms, with banks, IT product companies, uh, telecom companies, banks. So uh, the Scrum has applications you know, across a wide spectrum of domains. So that is the reason why it is more popular. So both Waterfall and Scrum are very generic <clears throat> because they can be applied across uh, domains. Key point one, Scrum is a generic agile framework which can be applied to any domain. So if you are targeting uh, to get a certificate at the end of this course, please note down. Key point one, that is Scrum is a generic agile framework which can be applied to any domain. So let us proceed. So here we have the waterfall as discussed uh, requirements collection, then sign off, then we move on to design, sign off, then we move on to construction, then sign off, move on to testing, then sign off and commissioning. And then maybe end of life, uh, the, the scrapping of the product itself. Uh, all these waterfall models, they revolve around plan, do, check, and act. So whatever we want to do, we must plan first, then try to do things as per the plan. And uh, once in a while you check to see whether things are going as per the plan or not. And if there is a variance, we take action. So all the waterfall models, it goes uh, with the PDCA, plan, do, check, act by uh, Deming. Here the problem is if the requirements related defect, if it is not captured during requirement phase, and if I am if I can finish it off in the requirement phase itself, it will cost me only one factor or one dollar. Uh, at the same requirements defect, if I want to fix in the design phase, it is going to cost me ten dollars. But if it is corrected during construction, it is going to cost me hundred dollars and testing phase it thousand. So this, the cost of rework or the cost of fixing a defect, this grows uh, exponentially. So that is a challenge with the waterfall models because incorporation of the change in a late in the project is very expensive. So that is one problem with waterfall. Then we have iterative and incremental approach Everything revolves around an iteration. So before the iteration, we have a plan. And during the iteration, we do, do the work. And at the end of the iteration, we study. And based on uh, the learning or the study, we take action. Uh, so it is iterative and incremental projects. It, it keeps move, advancing in iterations. At the end of every day, <clears throat> sorry, at the end of every iteration, an increment of the product is built. And this improves predictability and this reduces risk because at the end of every iteration, uh, the, the key stakeholders are able to see the product and then uh, there can be a review, there can be a retrospective at the end of each cycle. So we are, this project moves in 30-day iterations or 15-day iterations. So this gives more opportunities to analyze what all things we are doing correctly and what all things needs improvement. Uh, so this improves predictability and reduces risk because if the first sprint fails uh, and if I learn from it, maybe the second sprint uh, can be more successful. And similarly, as we advance in the iteration, at some point in time, uh, we will get very good, uh, our predictability will improve and it will reduce the uh, risk, uh, both the functional risk as well as technology risk in the product. Here the key point number two, 
all agile frameworks are iterative and incremental in nature please note down key point 2 all agile frameworks are iterative and incremental in nature then when to go for agile the question is should we follow agile in every project the answer is no so we can look at things from two parameters uh, one is the scope clarity and the other one is the familiarity with the technology if the scope clarity is very high and if the familiarity with the technology is also very high still we can go with waterfall because the amount of changes will be very less at the same time if the scope clarity is very low and the familiarity with the technology is also very low then there is a lot of ambiguity in the project so it is better to go with uh, agile because things will keep on changing then it is better to follow agile so plus uh, one more factor is the the ease of incorporating changes so if you take a kind of civil construction project sometimes it becomes very difficult to keep 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 change, keep including changes especially when the product is in a advanced state so if the engineering discipline doesn't allow for change it is still better to go with waterfall but within uh, an epc project still till the engineering completion design and engineering completion still we can follow agile but the moment you start pouring concrete uh, it is very difficult to change things after that so it is better to follow waterfall uh, when the project reaches the real construction phases whereas uh, any new development new product development uh, the scope clarity will be very low and the familiarity with the technology also can be very low because the team can be working on emerging technologies in such cases it is better to go with uh, agile project management the key point number 3 agile is more applicable for projects where the requirements are highly volatile or the requirements are changing rapidly that is the key point number 3 please note down agile is more applicable for projects where requirements are volatile or requirements are rapidly changing in such projects agile can deliver higher value or higher benefits now what is a product a product is a vehicle to deliver value it has a clear boundary known stakeholders well defined users or customers a product could be a service a physical product or something more abstract as well uh, it could be kind of uh, you know improving the quality of life of people or reducing traffic jam so that is very abstract terms or it could be a service or it could be a physical product uh, by itself now uh this diagram we call it as the bcg matrix because it was uh, developed by uh, the boston consulting group uh so here a product every product starts as a question mark that means when we start a product we don't know whether it is going to be a successful or a failure so we start playing with the proof of concept and stuff like that so every product starts as a question mark then it moves into star category that means it start bringing in some revenue then suddenly this can be an emerging product so that becomes a star and then from star it can become a cash cow that is uh, that that product brings in lot of revenue and after that slowly the product will become a dog so if you take apple computers now uh maybe the apple tv was there for a long time maybe apple watch is, apple car is a question mark still it is in a question mark state uh, whereas apple watch can be a star emerging uh, i iphone and imac could be cash cows and ipod is already it has become a dog 
because nobody they are not promoting it they are not investing on it uh, and it is not available to buy as well so uh, when products move from question mark to star we can expect a uh, lot of requirements changes and similarly when a product is moving from stars to cash cow requirements will change and when it moves from cash cow to dog the requirements can be very very stable so in a product if the requirements are not changing that itself is an indication that the product is reaching end of life so thanks to boston consulting group uh, for uh, coming out with uh, these classifications now what is scrum scrum is the most popular framework among the agile frameworks like uh, xp dsdm test driven development feature driven development scaled agile etc It's developed by Ken Squabber and uh, Jeff Sutherland early 1990s. So it is not something uh, very new. It was there from the year 1990. Now, because of the pandemic and stuff like that, people were forced to work from anywhere. So suddenly, these agile frameworks, you know, they 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 became uh, very popular because of this distributed work. Uh, here we have uh, Ken Scraber and uh, Jeff Sutherland. Uh, the first version of the Scrum Guide was released in the year two zero one zero. So this particular training, uh, we are basing it on the Scrum Guide uh, latest version. Uh, it can be Scrum can be applied to various domains. Scrum is a very lightweight framework, and because it is light, there is nothing to customize there. and it helps people teams and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions for complex problems so very often people ask like things like can scrum be applied on big projects that means a lot of people are working on it or in very complex projects the answer is yes uh, because uh people with 800 member teams and all uh working on complex uh work uh, complex projects uh they have successfully uh implemented scrum uh and uh, and delivered successful products now here the key point for to be noted scrum can be applied for complex as well as simple projects by number 4 scrum can be applied for complex as well as simple projects now let me give you a high level overview of scrum framework so we have the product backlog which is maintained by the product owner so when we say product backlog uh this is a wish list of features that may or may not get into the product that means this is a raw list of potential features which are not validated uh put into an excel sheet kind of thing with one liner requirements are not elaborated it's all one liners and it is owned by the product owner who owns the product then we get into a sprint planning meeting where the product owner prioritizes some requirements uh and the product owner scrum master and the team member all together gets into a sprint planning meeting and output of the sprint planning meeting is the sprint backlog means uh the features which they have agreed to uh, develop during the sprint and the sprint is maximum a 30 day cycle uh, some teams run with 15 day cycles or 10 day cycle so you can decide the duration of your sprints and whatever you decided in the sprint backlog you uh, the teams develop it and every day there is a daily meeting of the team members a short meeting of 15 minutes that is known as a daily scrum and at the end of the sprint the product increment comes out and uh, it gets reviewed by the product owner scrum master and the other key stakeholders 
Uh, and if whatever is scheduled in the sprint backlog, if it is done successfully, then we say the sprint is successful. Uh, irrespective of whether the sprint is successful or not, we get into a sprint retrospective meeting where things like what we did right and what must be improved, all those things are discussed uh, and sorry. And uh, that learning, with that learning, we get into the subsequent sprint planning meeting. So this is a very high level explanation of the Scrum framework. And as we progress, we will dwell into these things more and more. Now in the next video, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take you through the lesson two. So totally we have four lessons. We completed one, lesson number one now. The next video has the lesson number two. Uh, and uh, that will be recorded soon. Uh, and uh, we'll provide the link to that video uh, from here itself. Thank you very much.